Hello again. The subject for this short recording is academics or academia versus God. But first it's important to hear what God is saying in the heart. So let us pray. Let us be still and reflect on what God is trying to say to my heart to share with you. Father, Mother, God, you are the source, the one who is the I Am Presence. You are Alpha, you are Omega, you are the beginning and the end. We come in faith, we trust in our heart that you who hear our prayer respond magnanimously. Today I ask you to speak to my heart what this is saying to me. And I call on Francis, Magdalena, Kuan Yin, I call on White Eagle, I call on Buddha, I call on the prophets, the wise ones and the angelic realm. And may this recording give you glory. Thank you. Academia, does it first God? Well, let's look at it two ways. In mainstream society, where there's a free education, it's expected that every person comes out of the education system with a recognized qualification to help them in employment. That's good sense, isn't it? But moving on in the spiritual path, There's a trend today where a lot of enlightened speakers and authors are dancing to their ego rather than to a heart of simplicity. Or am I wrong? Academia has its place, providing it doesn't overrule common sense and the heart. And I know there are different schools of spirituality. For example, Benedictine spirituality is a beautiful spirituality. And Benedict spoke a lot of sense, but he appeals to a mindset of brothers and sisters who need to process through their giftedness, through their mind. Whereas I have adopted the simplicity of the Essenes who reprogram the mind to bring it into the heart. And in my research over the years I discovered that my lineage as a nurse and now as a lay monastic member, contemplative monk of the Interfaith Franciscans goes right back through the monastic order I was with in the Catholic Church which started in the 14th century in Germany right back to Mount Carmel and I was made aware in prayer that on Mount Carmel St. John the Evangelist, the beloved disciple with Magdalena and Jesus they were part of the Joannine Essenes, a community of love, as opposed to the Nazarene Essenes that Peter and the early disciples belonged to before they changed the name to Christian. They came from a mindset where they had to process everything through the head. And that is the legacy today of the Catholic Church. It's coming to us through the mind. And often it engenders fear and guilt and if it was a mindset of love then why has so many doctrines and dogmas enslaved so many people to illness as I've encountered in my work when I was out on the road delivering retreats and providing therapies to many people and a lot of my client base were Catholic Christian and 78% of that client group became mentally ill because of guilt and fear and are now estranged 
from their religion and from a loving God. Is that a legacy that a church gives us in the name of God? That strikes me as being an academic response to God, where academia upholding the dogma, the letter of the law, with no feeling, no compassion, opposes God's message of love. And that's why my heart responds to the teachings of Magdalena and St. John, who represented love. And from that school we had the great St. Augustine, a lot of the monastic nursing orders came from that lineage because they wanted not to teach about God but demonstrate his love. So there was no question of academia versing God, unlike the Nazarene scenes who became Christian, where academia down through the centuries became of primary importance. That you had to be academic in order to be accepted as a minister or priest. And it was expected of you to have a doctorate. But hey, God is not calling us all to be brain boxes. He's inviting us to come to him from the heart. And it's the heart that receives the message of God. And it's the heart that falls in love with God's simplicity. And I guess that's why I love Francis, because he came from a mindset similar to that of Peter of fear as a Catholic Christian in Italy in the 12th century, where the church was corrupt and he was disillusioned. But he left his father's house. He turned his back on a wealthy career as an accountant and he put on sackcloth and ashes and went into the fields and very soon his search for God brought many thousands of people to follow him. But down through the centuries even the Franciscans have got embroiled in academia where they've got to uphold the various teachings of the church and oh, it's a minefield. But that's why I like being who I am a member of the Teo community because we're non-hierarchical. Yes, we have a spiritual mother and yes, she guides us as a mother would. But her primary f purpose is to be God's representative and not to be a dictator. So academia has its place. And though there are many beautiful authors and TV show hosts like Oprah Winfrey, when you watch them and listen to them, they lose you because there's no simplicity. It's all about dogma and being correct, being politically correct. And there's a lot going on about appeasing the ego. It's like a balance, a fighting of the wills, of who's bigger, who's better, who's greater. And someone like me, well, we're in embarrassment really. I'd rather be that way and keep it simple. So my God isn't found in a church building. My God is found in the field. And I embrace God, not through the academic route, but through nature. And there I find a loving God. But academia is necessary to help us understand, but not if it takes us away from simplicity. Because Jesus said, become like the little child. Come to your father as a little child in trust, didn't he? And he also said, unless you become like a little child, manifesting childlike simplicity, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So I think we need to take responsibility for that and we need to bring simplicity back into the arena of conversation with God. And, and simplicity is not about being childish, it's about being childlike. It's about coming to a loving God and listening in the heart. God bless you. <laughs>